So it is, um, what is today? It's the day before Mother's Day, and it's such a beautiful day. And today when I woke up, I felt like I wanted to discuss openly with people how to trust their intuition and how to listen to it and how to open up to it. And so I'm tuned in live, and I'm just waiting for anybody to join the broadcast with me to have a dialogue. I, I'm hi welcome and i'm just uh just plugging in i've never done this where i'm just gonna be open and have a open and live dialogue about trusting your own intuition but i'm pretty excited about it because it's it's something that i believe all of us have i feel that all of us have uh this in us and we're born with it and learning to quiet the chatter of your mind and open that up on the inside from the inside is such a gift and such an amazing thing and i felt like a lot of people sometimes don't have a somewhere to go or someone to talk to if they're uh if they have questions about this or how to open it up more so um, I'm really excited to share this and to have this uh, discussion openly with anyone who wants to join. So I'm pretty excited. And I'm just going to wait. I've, again, I've never done this, so kind of excited. Hi, Tanner. Are you looking out the window? Are you looking out the window? You are, because you're a good boy. Hi. <laughs> I'm just here. It's the first time I've ever done a live dialogue where I'm just open to discuss things with people. Hey. Thanks for joining me. I'm uh, I'm just sitting here enjoying a beautiful Saturday afternoon and thought that I would have an open forum for anybody who might want to discuss uh, how to develop their own psychic gifts. And I'm really open to it. Hi, Tina. Hi. Oh, well, I've got a real psychic uh, here with me right now. Tina, you're amazing. Um, and uh, I really just kind of popped on and thought that I wanted to talk to people because as you know, I'm sure a lot of people don't have anybody to talk to as they're developing psychically or if they have questions. That's my dog in the window. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Happy Saturday to you too. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so uh, to me, when when I mean, I've been doing psychic work for over 25 years. I'm heading into my 26th year as a professional but uh, practicing it for even more time in my life. And even still, I question sometimes if, it, if I'm feeling something intuitively, whether it's me thinking it or whether I'm feeling it from my heart space. And I know a lot of people are looking for opportunities, maybe sometimes to dialogue with others about trusting it, um, how to quiet the frantic mind, how to uh still the thoughts and open up to the intuitive voice and to really discern what's going on in there and one of the main things that i tell people right off the bat is to not jump to any conclusions you know when you first get a psychic download you know it could come in really big and bold it might even cause you to step back and feel a little nervous and to not jump to any big, huge conclusions right off the bat, you know, to take note, oh, that got my attention, or, ooh, I feel, I feel something intense, you know, but to wait almost like a detective and to gather knowledge and gather information on it. Um, and there's a cat on my lap, so that's what I'm fiddling with, to gather information and to give yourself time to dig in and, and listen to more information to go inside and ask questions of yourself you know to pop in and say okay i feel something it may feel negative or it might feel low vibrational does it feel human does it feel male or female does it feel old or young um is there a message how deep of a sense of um positive or negative energy am i feeling hi sue nice to see you 
Oh, I'm glad you're here. Hi. Hi. So I'm talking about like when you get a vibe on something to not jump to any major conclusions, but to just open up and ask yourself, you know, um, uh, more information, you know, to tell your subconscious, I want more. Give me a little more information, something more I can work with, something more I can plug into. Um, it, you know, it's really like sometimes as soon as you're doing psychic work, there's this hunger or this need to have to know the answer right away or to to suddenly have something to say and you know it, it sometimes we have to mull it over or ponder it or go through a lot of questions in your own head before you come up with a grand conclusion so for me what i'm loving about psychic development in myself is that i'm like a, a detective and i get to hi andrea how nice to have you here that you get to be a detective and kind of jump in on it and dialogue about it and dig in and roll up your sleeves and find out more information. You know, I always encourage people, have a notebook or, or run, a, run a, um, a voice recorder while you're investigating something intuitively. Oh, I'm so glad, Sue, that you've been working on this subject. I think it's it just makes, the more you learn it, the you never unlearn what you've learned, right? So that the more you jump in and are, are working on this kind of topic, the easier it gets, the more you start to listen to how your subconscious is talking to you. And I, again, always encourage that if you're doing psychic work or if you're going to say you want to throw cards or you want to do a meditation and search out information, to run a voice recorder run on a tape recorder and talk and let your your stream of consciousness just come out whatever it might be especially if nobody's around and and there's you've got you know you don't have to worry about how weird you might sound to just go ahead and talk about how you feel it maybe sometimes asking yourself where in my form do i feel this you might you know you might just dive in and start to do a little bit of psychic investigation or psychic work and suddenly your stomach feels funny or you your legs feel wobbly or you might get a little um a uh, little like the hairs on the back of your neck standing up and what i encourage is for you to be that investigator and to say okay i'm identifying it in these different spots in my body or I'm feeling it like a whisper, or I'm seeing colors, you know, to go ahead and, and let your subconscious play with you a little bit, let your subconscious bob in and out of ways it wants to communicate with you. And the more you're open to that, the more your subconscious is gonna get through in different ways. You know, it's so cool. I'm sure all of you have had the experience where you go into a, a location or you go into a house and you, you just, you get a feeling like sometimes it just, it either feels really good or it might feel really oppressed or it might feel like a really happy place or kind of a, a place that's a little bit stuck in time, like a little frozen. There's no, no sense of flow at all. It just feels uh, tight. Even if it's open and airy, the energy might feel closed in and to have that be like a point of fun or a point, of, hi Simone, hi a point of uh, being able to investigate it further, to not again, to, to not jump to any big conclusion, but to know I'm taking in this information. Um, oh, Sue, I love your question. And you asked, how do you shut off the mind shatter? That is a really big question and it's so important. Um, I'm really a big one for learning how to quiet the mind through meditation or through repetitive process, such as say a re, re, um, humming a repetitive sound or uh, drumming a rhythmic sense, sometimes even just rocking in a rocking chair, as weird as it sounds, that, that movement's very much taking us back in our life to comfort and quietness and peacefulness. And it can very quickly get our mind to shut off all that whirlbird bird stuff and get our mind to, um, um, open up a bit more and and uh, feel more clear i also will say um of course meditation if if you're able to do it mindfulness where you have single focus sometimes when we're cooking or sometimes if we're doing a hobby or an activity uh for me doing a big jigsaw puzzle like a big thousand or two thousand piece puzzle i don't think about much else and it's a really great time for me to tap in and practice listening to my intuitive self Finding a spot that you love to sit, where maybe you, in that spot you're very peaceful, maybe a certain chair on your front porch or a certain chair in your house, 
or going to a space that feels a bit sacred, um, uh, one little spot that you very much enjoy, and to give yourself the okay to know when I'm in this spot, I'm going to um, be able to open up to my intuitive self. And you start a bit of a routine that way, sometimes by telling your subconscious self, when I go sit in this space, I'm very much open to intuitive messages. And as you start to practice and get used to that, you your subconscious often then will get excited right before you go sit in that chair and start giving you a bit of a message beforehand. Um, Sue, you wrote with a little clarity, you wrote, open up and focus better. Yeah. Um, my feeling is to, to listen to even the subtle things that you're getting. Say, as you're opening up to do some psychic work, you want to maybe tune in and just touch into how you feel as your base when you start and what is changing in yourself as you go through dealing with something or meditating on something psychically or, or looking into something psychic and to listen to those body clues because it's just, that's my dog barking and it must be somebody walking by outside. Um, being able to like fine tune like radio um, uh, your gifts to be able to know, okay, um, I'm starting to listen to my body clues or I'm open to receive messages and I'm going to, Tanner, Tanner, he's so cute. Tanner, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, there's people walking by. It's good. Okay, so to open up and focus better is really about trusting your tool, to not get stuck in your head hoping, oh, I hope this works, I hope this works, but to say, you know what, today I'm going to hand myself over to trust it. Today I'm going to just be open to whatever, not to have preset expectations, not to think in advance what you're hoping to receive psychically. That's a lot of pressure on your subconscious self, especially if, say, I sit down to do some psychic work and I want to talk to a loved one who's on the other side and that's the goal I want to achieve. But maybe my mind's a little frantic or maybe I haven't done any psychic work in a while and instead of maybe a loved one coming through, my psychic self wants to give me some messages about um, upcoming events in my life instead, or maybe it wants to nudge me a little bit about taking care of myself a little better. And if I sit down and I close myself off to only have a singular focus, um, it can sometimes, as we're developing, cause our... Tanner, Tanner, Shushi. Oh, it's so sorry, guys. Tanner, Tutu, it's okay, little bug. No, it's okay. So to be able to um, uh, be able to quiet that mind and not have expectations is is a good way to encourage your subconscious to open up even more. To know you're not closing off opportunity; that you're open to anything, any kind of message, whether it's whether it's um, subtle and about loving yourself more, or maybe a incident might pop up in your head of something that you haven't resolved yet, and then that might be there instead of sometimes having a strong agenda, especially while you're working on it and developing it. I encourage that you, for the highest good, sit in a place of peace within yourself, open to whatever your subconscious may want to give you. You know, sometimes you might not get a message. Sometimes you might just be sitting there and um, allowing yourself to just relax and feeling very peaceful. Other times you might have so many different messages coming in that it's hard to sort through them all. Again, one of the things that I encourage is that you have a tape recorder running or a voice recorder running or have a notepad that you can just jot down Everything, we, anything that pops into your head, anything. Uh, when you're doing psychic work, everything around you. Shh, Tanner, Tanner, Shushis. Oh, it's a neighbor. It's the neighbor. Aw, uh, my neighbors were away for a couple months and they've just come home and he's guarding their driveway with great fervor. Um, so being able to, <laughs> being able to um, uh, simply just sit and, and, be open to whatever or however messages are going to come. Strangely so, helps you understand how your subconscious wants to talk to you. And the more you get used to that, Tanner, shush, shush, shush. Hey, hey, where's, where's Toy? I'm going to get my dog a toy. I'm so sorry, guys. Where's Toy? Go get Toy. Go get Toy. Go get Toy, Tanner. 
Okay. So again, allowing yourself to sit in that space and be open to however your subconscious wants to talk to you is a very awesome way to get used to it. Um, taking care of yourself, being well rested. When we're under stress or when we're not feeling well, it's our subconscious is not in play zone. Our body is in healing mode or stress management mode. Sometimes when we're overtired, we're not able to slip away from, shh, hey, no, no, babies, no, come, come here. Slip away from the busyness of our mind and be able to get to a place where we are in a flow state. And when we're, we're overactive or have a lot going on, trying to wedge in a lot of psychic work or psychic practice is difficult. And it's important that we make space for that. Like I was saying, having a, a sacred space that you make that is sort of your psychic spot, that when you go into that space, your subconscious starts to get used to. I'm sorry, just, I'm, I'm so sorry. I Tanner, come on, let's find Toy. Just a second, guys, I'm sorry. Come here. Come here. Come on, boy. Come boy. Good boy. Good boy. All right. Good boy. Okay. Thanks for bearing with me. <sighs> okay. So, um, creating that sacred space where you're able to um, uh, kind of that's your practice spot is a really great way to start to open up your mind faster and to get focused quicker is because again your subconscious will get used to um, opening up in that space sometimes having a routine that you're gonna sit and cl clear your mind do a gentle meditation maybe light a candle um, prep your space is preparing your subconscious to play in the psychic realm and it's an important step to opening up and developing your psychic self is again respecting the process not that you aren't psychic all the time because you are you're psychic when you're at the grocery store you're psychic when you're out and about but again taking that extra time to prep your space to honor the practice to honor the practice while you're doing it to honor it in advance of doing that makes it easier to open up you know it does take time to develop and to know that it's, it's something that um you know taking classes is great but also sitting patiently and really nurturing yourself with unconditional acceptance that it's going to develop that it's going to grow and expand definitely is very important and and to not rush that process I also encourage people to pay attention to their dreams, even if you don't usually remember them, or even if they're, they're very distant when you wake up in the morning. What I encourage is that you have a pad of paper next to your bed um, and a pen, or and you just, instead of needing to remember details, what I'd love for you to get into the practice of is asking yourself when you wake up, what do I feel? <laughs> Uh, you're so funny, Sue. Oh, stress, what is that? I love it. Ah, yeah, right? Um, what is it without it, I guess, is a good question. Um, but being able to put a pad of paper and suggest to your subconscious that you're going to remember your dreams and then getting into the practice of waking up and, and asking yourself, not necessarily what were the details, but what was the feeling that dream left me with? Maybe you wake up even though you were being chased all night long in a dream, but you wake up in the morning feeling like you were laughing or feeling like you were just annoyed by it. Not frightened, but annoyed. It's important to just jot that down. I, I, this dream made me feel stressed or annoyed, or the dream made me feel excited and happy. And then to get into details as you can remember them. But the key part is how the dream made you feel, because that sets the tone for what your subconscious was trying to tell you. Uh, you might have upcoming decisions to make and you have a dream that you're being chased all night long. And when you wake up in the morning, you might be feeling uh, like you're under pressure or that you can't get away from these decisions or these things that are chasing you. And to really roll that back into what it is that you're working on in your life and how it correlates to how your subconscious was talking to you through that dream state. So again, one of the key parts is to be able to ask yourself, how did it make me feel? But also kind of what's going on in my life and does that feeling apply to anything that's occurring currently in my life or issues that I'm working with at this time in my life? It's awesome. Um, 
you know, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, do you have any um, uh, things that you're working on with your psychic self? Like, um, do you meditate regularly or do you have um, um, times where your dreams seem very prophetic? That gut instinct when you meet people is another awesome way to develop yourself psychically is to pay attention not to how they appear to you visibly, but to how you feel when you're near them. Because the psychic stuff is all about how you feel. It's not about what you're thinking or how, how what you're thinking about something. It's definitely what that feeling was. And it's one of the things um, I get a lot of calls from people and they, they'll tell me, you know, um, uh, they're they're dealing with an issue or they're dealing with a problem or they they have concerns around a child or something and we'll get into the details of it and once we dive into that really asking them how they feel about it inside in themselves whether there's a sense of foreboding whether they feel really excited about this decision say your child starts dating somebody new and you know, as a parent, we might be very protective, but sometimes we'll get a real feeling like, wow, this is a really good combination, or not I hope it is, but that it genuinely feels like it is, or that it feels like this, there might be some struggles, or maybe there's going to be some bumps along the way, and it's a feeling. It's not even about thinking about it at all. It's about a gut feeling that you get. So again, paying attention to how you feel in any given situation, how you feel when you meet somebody for the first time, or how you feel when you're hearing information for the first time. Say there's work changes going on and you're sitting in a meeting and you're listening to all this stuff that's up and coming and you're getting not what you're thinking about it. Sure, at work it might be, you know, here comes more change. But to kind of shut off that mind and go down into your heart space and say, but how, how, how does that change feel to me from, from my heart space, from the kind of the center, from my heart chakra? What's the feeling I get deep inside there? Because again, your subconscious self will speak to you in the form of feelings and that kind of dialogue. Uh, yes, uh, Sue, she writes, Wendy, uh, possibly send this video to me here on Facebook to reference back on. I would be honored, you know, and I'm also going to post it on my YouTube channel, which is really easy to find, Sue. It's Psychic Wendy Jane. No, pardon me. Oh my gosh. The Psychic Wendy. If you type in YouTube forward slash The Psychic Wendy, anything that I've done, any videos I make, those gratitude journals that I'm doing also are all on my uh, YouTube channel. So I'll have it there, but I'll also uh, post it to you. Actually, I'm going to write a note to myself because I have to write it down because I am super duper forgetful. It's one of the things I think that I have that balances out that psychic stuff is that in the day-to-day -day life, I get a little spacey, a little flaky. I spend a lot of time out there in the psychic realm and sometimes the day-to-day hands-on stuff is a little harder for me uh, to remember the details. I always remember how somebody made me feel though. I can tell you, I remember the feeling, uh, but I don't remember details about, about uh, stuff that I've seen. Yeah, so um, I'm a, again, I come from the mindset that we all have this, we're born with it, it's a part of us, and we're, we're not taught to develop it at a young age, usually. And I think it's something that we should be learning when we're young, or teaching our children to be able to do when they're very young, is not just um, what happened in school, but how did you feel about what happened in school? Helping children understand and discern not just I was angry, but maybe I was frustrated, or to chop um, how they feel into lots of little descriptive words, because that's where we really start to harmonize with our intuitive self is when we can identify what we feel or put it into words how we feel. And the more you can discern that, the easier it is to develop psychically to know, oh, interesting. Um, not, not only do I feel uncomfortable here, but what kind of uncomfortable, right? I feel, um, I feel like I don't have a decision. I don't have choice. Or I feel um, like I'm being watched. We all know that feeling. Or I feel um, unsure, almost a sense that I'm not sure I want to move forward on something. And again, they're very subtle difference, dif differences between 
just being uncomfortable and being uncomfortable at what level and how. And to really start to have fun, you know, through everything, throughout your day. You wake up in the morning and, and a thought comes in your head and you think, how did I, what was I feeling about that thought? Not just what was I thinking, but what was I feeling about that? That's an awesome exercise to do on a daily basis while you're working on developing your psychic self is being able to put into words your sense of feeling, how things feel, because that's again how your psychic self is going to speak to you. Yes, it's going to come in with sometimes images. Sometimes it'll come in with um, symbols, uh, sensations. You'll get shapes and colors and things like that. Um, sometimes you'll see things like almost like a movie screen playing out in front of you. Other times you'll just get some random weird thing that pops into your head and you don't know why it's there. It could be just the weirdest thing. Like suddenly you remember playing in the sandbox when you were a child. It just pops into your head while you're trying to do some psychic work. And what I encourage is that you go into yourself another step further and ask yourself, okay, I see myself in that sandbox, but how do I feel? What is that making me feel? Do I feel like I'm having fun? Do I feel included? Do I feel really creative? Do I feel alone and off to the side? Why is this being in, why is this showing up in my psychic self? And how do I feel about it? And, and that's the cool part about it as you develop is that, you know, there's no real big mystery to it all. The more you dig into it, the more you realize it's actually a very subtle thing about tuning in, fine tuning even more into your feelings and your awareness of those feelings and correlating that with what you're seeking, the information you're trying to find, or what's going on at the time. So again, it's, it's kind of cool. It's almost like, um, it's like a little mathematical equation where you, you add together sort of the pieces to the puzzle to come up with your, your feeling, your resolve, or your message that you're getting. Again, I, I always encourage people too to have fun. Hi, Charity, I'm glad you're here. To have fun developing yourself psychically. It's fun. This doesn't need to feel like work at all. The more it feels like work, the more I would say don't do it right now. Um, I want you to approach your psychic development from a, a position of wonderment and excitement to know that the less I have expectations on this, the more I'm going to feel free to really just play inside this space, to really just let it bubble up and bubble around inside me without me having to be good at it yet or knowing what exactly I'm supposed to be saying or how do I turn this into a message. You know, again, it's it's a subtle thing, but it is so good for you. And it really does help. The more you're exercising your psychic self, the more you are able to plug into that tool when you want to plug into it or in situations where you need to plug into it and really get a download by playing with it when it's your daily practice, by playing with it when big decisions aren't hanging in the balance. It's just fun. You're just swimming around playing with your psychic self and really enjoying figuring out that neat dialogue inside yourself. But when real stuff's happening and you really need to tap into that intuitive self, the cool part is you're able to dive in with more confidence because you played in that realm, because you got to dance in that space a little bit when there wasn't something big and major going on. So it's kind of cool. It's, it's, it's the neatest thing because it's almost like, um, oh, I don't know what the right term would be. I guess learning how to play with a toy where it, it, it should be fun, um, where it could be, you know, a new experience or a fun experience. And that you, you know when you're just starting something new, you don't have to be great at it. You don't have to put any pressure on yourself. And even if you've been developing, developing this for a really long time, I'm sure if you have been working on it for a long time, you are very aware that it, it should still be taken from a place of lightness and, and positive energy, not feeling like it's a grind and that you have to chase information. I always know a, need, a reading needs to stop. Um, oh, I'm so glad, Sue, that you're feeling like this is going to help. That means the world to me. That's why I'm doing it is I kind of feel like sometimes people are out there and they, they just 
don't have a dialogue about it, you know? And I think it's something that we should all talk about on a regular basis because it's a huge part of us. It's a huge part of being alive is, is opening up to our intuition and our, our developing our intuitive self. Hi, Susan. I'm so glad you're here. Yay. So, you know, to, to take it lightly, to have fun with it, and to not put pressure on yourself, because just like almost anything in our life, I'm just scrolling through here, guys. Oh, hi, I'm doing great, Susan. Um, so to, to know that the psychic self will kind of run and hide in a corner if we're demanding that it show up. At least I've noticed that in, in my work is if I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself where, oh my gosh, I really gotta do this right. I got, you know, I gotta, I gotta be psychic right now. I gotta do it. Uh, to me, I'm just blocking myself. I'm not in a state of flow. I'm not in a state of peacefulness from the inside. And in that case, then I'm almost making my messages elusive to me. And that in itself is teaching us, right? Sometimes when we're chasing something around the room and we can't grab it, we're still learning something from that experience. But what I encourage is that the information, you should not chase it. Hi, Daryl. I saw your little face pop up. I'm glad you're here. So it's not about chasing information. It's about trusting that the information will be there if it's for the highest good for you to see it or for you to experience it. Again, kind of handing it over to say, if I'm meant to see this, if it's for the highest good, it will be there. If I'm expecting it, demanding it, running around behind it, chasing it, I can assure you, I might not even be able to trust the information that I'm getting because I've got so much of my mind over involved in this process. Um, you know, giving yourself again that that space of time, nurturing and taking care of yourself. And I'm just going to read what you're saying, Susan. I love this. When I get that way, I pull back. Yes, so do I. And wait another time. Me too. I learn not to push it, but to trust it and let it flow naturally. That's exactly what I'm saying, Susan. I'm glad you worded it so well is that even when I'm in a reading with a client, which is, you know, a little, you know, kind of weird for me to say, but if it's not there and I'm not feeling it, I have been doing this so long that I'm aware of that. And I'm able to let that client know, you know what, I'm chasing it. Today I'm chasing this information and either reschedule or sit back, unplug, take a minute, see if I can reground myself. But trying to for push a circle into a square, first off, it's not good for your psychic self because you're not learning it, you're chasing it, and you're going to have to sit and relax back into the practice of it. But it's also not good for your client. It's, it's not good for business. You want your client to get all of you at the highest vibrational level when you're really in a beautiful state of flow. And Susan, I just love hearing that you're comfortable enough to kind of walk a uh, step back from it a minute. That, that just means a lot to me. It, it's an ethical question, isn't it? When we get down to it, when you're with somebody and you feel like you have to perform uh, or you've got to grind this out or you've got to give them their money's worth. And, and that's a terrible place to be psychically when you're working on this because it's, it's, it's blocking and plugging the process and the information won't, won't be there or it won't, won't be tuned in. Um, taking that deep breath, rescheduling sometimes definitely is something that I support 100%, no matter how long you've been doing it. You know, I talk to some psychics that have been in the industry for a really long time, and they um, they they are going to make it happen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. And they're going to they're gonna try and make it happen. Um, and my feeling is you can tell when you're chasing something, you can tell when you're in your head instead of in your heart space. There's, that's another way to really develop yourself psychically or to open up and trust your intuition is to constantly ask yourself, am I thinking this or am I feeling this? Is this up in my head or is it coming from like the center of my being? I know it's so strange, but I just keep motioning to this part right here, this beautiful, bright, gorgeous green um, heart chakra. It's so bright and luminous and gorgeous, but that's where the psychic stuff is coming from. And when you're thinking, when you're looking up here from up in your head, 
it, you're, you're, you know, you're thinking it's all right to be honest with yourself. You know, that's another thing is, you know, it's okay to, to say, ah, oh, I caught myself thinking in the middle of that psychic work, you know, and to, to be honest with yourself about it again, the, the lighter you're taking it without putting a whole world of pressure on your shoulders to have to come up with an answer or to have all the, all the right, you must do it right. Or I got to get this answer. My feeling is the lighter you can become about that, the more you can get and have a good sense of humor. Uh, but to also be very honest with yourself and know, isn't that interesting? I caught myself in the middle of doing my psychic work and I caught myself overthinking. And I, I learned from that. It's great to learn from that. You know, uh, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I've lost my gifts. You know, I, I hear from professional psychics sometimes that, that will call and they'll be concerned that their gift has, that has left them. And I kind of go through a series of questions when that happens with them. Um, of course, sometimes we go back to some of the very basics about were you enjoying your work anymore, that kind of thing. But I also go into what are your stress levels right now? How much pressure are you under? Especially if it's somebody who's doing it professionally, how badly do you need that money? Um, because if you're in a grind and you need money really bad and you're trying to do it through psychic work, oftentimes your gifts are going to evade you. They're going to slip away because you're not in it from a peaceful place of love and positive information for somebody. You're in it for money. And uh, the psychic stuff is pretty tricksy and it's not going to show in full bloom if you're not in the right heart space or doing it for the right purpose often. You get very misled and that's when you hear all these stories of people um, going to psychics and being kind of ground through a mill where the psychic's just bashing you through and that you end up not feeling like you got a reading of any value or you didn't get a reading of any depth. You ended up feeling kind of used and battered and, and um, somebody saying whatever they wanted to to you. So one of the key parts, if you're the one doing the, the energy work or if you're tuning into the psychic stuff is again, keep it light, check in and out with yourself to be sure that you're doing it for the right reasons from a place of high vibration, love and light for the highest good, but to not get attached to needing an outcome, especially an outcome for a monetary payout. Um, to do it, for a, a good message or for a loving reason to be helpful um, for someone's highest good. Um, you know, I have this little message that I go through before I do a reading where I just sit and say, you know, um, if this is for the highest good, uh, let this message be here or let this be a purposeful moment. Uh, but if I'm moving along and it isn't there, I find it interesting. It, it, it's not like it's wasted time. I'm learning something. I'm certainly not going to pressure anybody. I'm not even pressure. There's no charge for that if it's not there. So um, again, don't put yourself in a lockbox where you, you are doing it and you have to get an answer and there's pressure on it. I'm reading what you said here is something's not coming in clear. You don't dig for it, right? You'll write it down. Uh, it means it will come out later, right? By yes, if, if you're not getting the message, I love that you're bringing that up. Make a little note, jot it down, or, or say something in your tape recorder. I sometimes will take a card, or if I'm using rocks and stones, and if one's just not resonating with me yet, I just push it to the side, and I come back to it later. It always makes sense as I move along. Um, yeah, practice getting to know and trust your intuition. I know. It's not the right heart space. It's the wrong place to be. That's right. It's, it's right. But a lot of people who start doing this kind of stuff get intoxicated by it. They don't mean to. Um, it's just, you, you know, we trip and fall sometimes into vices. And um, you, your ego might get involved or your daily needs might get involved as far as, again, needing money or something. Um, and my thought is um, if you are, are able to, to definitely design your psychic work in from a place that, if, if, if there's a good flow and it's all smooth, that's great. But if it's not there, there's no pressure. You're not in an in a uncomfortable spot financially or emotionally or someone else isn't either. It's really important ethically. You know, I think that's one of the spots where a lot of uh, intuitive people get all tangled up in themselves. And I've seen it happen for decades with many people of um, – needing needing so badly to to bring in the money 
that the flow completely shuts off. I mean, it's really weird how universe works. Um, and I'm constantly working with people to get back to the higher purpose or the the light, the, the energy and the positive reason that they want to develop psychically, even sometimes encouraging them to back away from the professional side of it while they work on their peaceful, quiet, intuitive side, doing their psychic development back to the basics for themselves. And it's okay to go all the way back to the basics if you need to. That's another thing that I think, um, you know, sometimes when I'm frantic and busy and on the go and stressed and my brain is just bouncing all over the place, I have to go back to the basics. I need to start to think about, am I taking care of my nutrition? Am I getting the sleep that I need? Am I managing my stress well? Have I been practicing my meditations enough? Am I peaceful within myself? And to also look at it as if it's not there, it's not that I've suddenly lost my gifts or I'm failing in some way. It's that they're just not there right now and it's all right for me to trust that they'll be back when it's time and to just trust that process. Again, sometimes shifting my focus to go do other things, to like organize different areas of my life or to do a little bit of gardening and just unplug or to, to take a break from work for a while and really work on grounding myself and nurturing myself. We go in and out of huge phases in our life where our psychic development is there and other times, or our psychic self is right next to us and other times it's a little elusive. That is extremely normal and nothing to criticize yourself about or judge. All right, I'm reading a couple people who have said they've been reading a couple of people at the same time. Two different readings. Okay, wait. Oh, I love this. I know a couple of people who have said they have been reading a couple of people at the same time. Two different readings. I will not do it because I don't feel it's fair to clients. They deserve. I see. A couple of people at the same time. Two different readings. Um, okay, so I'm trying to understand. Are you saying having two people sitting together at the table and you're bouncing back and forth between them for a session? or I know a couple of people who have said that they've been reading a couple of people at the same time, two different readings. All right, so Susan, I'm getting the impression you're saying having two people sit at the table at the same time and they share the session. I think that's what you're referencing. Um, okay, they deserve 100% of me, not 50%. Okay, I agree that people deserve 100% of you, not 50% of you, no matter what you're doing. But if I think what I'm trying to understand what you're saying, wait, let me see if you know she was doing online. Are you saying that a woman was giving the same message to two people and they didn't know they were sharing the same message from someone? Okay. In that, in my, personally to me, I'm not one to judge or, or criticize other psychics if I don't know all the details, but I got to say, I agree if somebody is trying to bang out as many readings as possible and kind of giving random messages out to several people or, or trying to kill two birds with one stone or something like that, I agree. I think that's highly unethical. And I, I think that, um, that I would guess that that person is going to really be struggling, I think, with their psychic gifts as they move ahead. You know, it's really neat. Um, our higher self is pure and beautiful and a light being and isn't going to let our earthly body run too far amok meddling in other people's lives intuitively or psychically. You will trip up and your gifts will evade you. They will slink away or the flow of your income will slink away if you are tangled up in your reasoning if it is not from a place of highest good and from a loving place, right from the heart center. Um, it's really cool to watch how, I mean, it's it's almost like their own monsters come and kind of chase after them eventually, psychics that do that. So yeah, I'm uncomfortable with that. Susan, I'd be curious to know if you said anything to her. Um, I'm a mouthpiece, you guys know. I mean, those of you who are watching and do know me, I'm, I'm pretty confrontive. I'm not 
going to sit there and tell anybody else how to um, do their psychic work per se. But if I do witness something that is unethical, where they are taking advantage of individuals or people or um, um, ripping people off, uh, that kind of stuff, I'm pretty outspoken about it. You can imagine what I'm like. I get quite mouthy. Um, because to me, I feel like we already, this, this industry already has a, um, a pretty bad reputation, of course. Um, it's getting a little better at, at this stage in time, but it's really important that we walk the ethical line and that we're doing it from a place of higher good. They didn't know she was doing two readings at once. Okay, that's what I was going to say, two separate people. I'm just, that's, that's awful. That's, oh, it's so wrong and um, chintzy and lazy, really. That's a lazy psychic right there. That's a, somebody being real lazy. Uh, I stand still, standpoint, have since my teenage years. Yeah, only want to help others. Yeah, I think um, a lot of psychics get lazy. Um, I think that anytime you're doing psychic work, you got to keep an eye on that for yourself. Um, cheating in a reading, doing uh, quick, easy ways to get information. That kind of stuff is uh, going to set you back in your intuitive gifts and skills. When you're walking that ethical line, your psychic self will walk along with you. If you start to go crazy and off to the side and get all tangled up with greed or power or manipulation or any of that, your intuitive self is going to hide from you. It's not going to come out and play. Um, it may even give you false messaging and lead you astray. A lot of times when people are dealing with um, what they call attachments, hi Kim, I'm so glad. They won't have to return clients or referrals. That's right, if they aren't ethical. That's exactly right, Kim. And I think that that's how, um, uh, I mean, I've had some really dud, dud readings with psychics where uh, at the end of it, I walk away and I think, oh my God, it's so awful and what an awful feeling. And I hope that nobody ever walks away feeling that way um, from my work. And I'm, um, I'm, I'm a real stickler for it. I have open dialogue with my clients beforehand about if, it, if it's just not resonating with you or if 